Hey, History Hoarder 63. Today's item of the day is this Model 1839 um, U.S. Non-commissioned officer's sword uh, plate for the over-the-shoulder uh, sword carriage for the 18 um, for the NCO sword that was carried by some non-commissioned officers. This particular piece was dug in a trench line east of Richmond, Virginia. I did not dig this one myself. I bought this some years ago, so unfortunately, I don't know exactly where east of Richmond is as regards this, this artifact. I don't know if it's down from the the Fort Harrison area, you know, or if it's further north up towards Seven Pines. Um, you know, there's extensive lines of entrenchments, both Confederate and Union, east of Richmond, or there were, a lot of them have been developed now, um, both from 1862 through 1864, 1865. There's a lot of activity there. Um, what's neat about this plate, though, is it has been pierced by what I believe was a artillery shell splinter, which an artillery shell splinter is just a very small fragment of an artillery shell. Um, it hit this plate with some velocity from rear to front. You can see the, the deformity of the plate here. Fairly jagged hole. This definitely wasn't hit by a mini ball because there would be a much, much bigger disfigurement of the plate here. This was a very small projectile that hit this and appears to have pierced right through the plate. Um, let's see if I can close. You can see kind of how jagged even the brass is where it had ripped through. It's a neat piece. Um, you know, again, hitting from back to front, if this plate was being worn, the, the splinter would have traveled completely through someone's body. So I'm not saying that someone was wearing this plate when it was hit. It could have been laying around, could have been on the ground, whatever. But it definitely hit from back to front, not front to back. Um, just a couple quick things, because people ask me about bullet struck plates, and they're one of the things I've collected for, for a while. I mean, I don't have a ton of them, but I have a few. And uh, there's a lot of fakes out there, so a lot. Um, one of the things that you can look for, uh, just a couple quick little bits and pieces. You know, there always should be some deformity on the plate. But a good telltale sign is, and I don't know if you can see it, there's this gray fog on the face of the plate here. That actually is vaporized lead solder or lead solder from the back of the plate that was ejected when the, when the, when the projectile hit. And then later on, there was it probably leached in from the back of the plate onto the front face as it was buried in the ground but via of via you know water and moisture in the soil that's something that's really hard to fake really hard to fake because that that uh lead oxide patina takes many 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 years to to uh grow on the plate i don't think you can chemically fake that i guess you could try to paint something on but it'd be pretty telltale sign um, another nice thing about this plate that, that gives it, you know, good cachet is, you know, obviously it's an old dug plate. It's got some loss, some rust bleed through on the face. So it is an old plate and these old Civil War plates that have been dug, you really can't, you can't fake them as bullet struck now because the lead solder in the back becomes very brittle from being buried and it would just crack out if you tried to bend this or actually I, I know or I've heard of instances where someone's tried to shoot a mini ball through a dug plate to see what happened. It basically blows all this, the solder out the back. So this one clearly is is good. I love seeing that that faint gray fog on the front around the, the exit hole. That is a really good sign that the plate is genuine. Anyway. Hope you enjoyed this and hope you maybe learned a little bit of something about you know, telling some of these uh, plates, real ones from fake ones. Anyway, take care. Have a good one.